Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Thought I'd sit down. Do another coffee chat for you guys. Drinking my, my black coffee. See, now I'm drinking something in some of these that nobody can create an issue with. There's no milk, there's no aspartame, just black coffee. No way anybody can turn that into anything controversial. So why the coffee has to be black. Is that a statement? You're making a political statement with that. <laughs> you know, you people are like that. And by you people, I mean my audience and the crazy people on the internet in general. They need to turn everything into a controversy. It's just coffee, yes. It's just coffee. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about bulking and cutting. Do I think bulking and cutting is strictly necessary? No, I don't think it really is. Look, the longer I've done this and the more I've observed, I'm not saying there aren't benefits to dedicated bulks and cuts because sometimes obviously uh, we need to gain or lose weight in order to reach a goal. In other, in other words, if your goal is to gain 20 pounds of muscle mass and you're relatively lean at a reasonable body fat, you're going to have to gain some weight eventually, okay, obviously. Um, if you're going to get shredded, and I, and I think that's the, the real thing with dedicated cuts, uh, dedicated cuts. If a person needs to get really ripped to an unsustainable level of ripped, yeah, they're probably gonna have to do a cut, okay? What you have to look at is how far is your current body weight from kind of your goal. Because I, I think by and large, if people are not trying to be super shredded or they don't have a bunch of weight to lose, like yeah, if you have 50 pounds of extra body fat to lose, obviously you're going to have to cut. And I've seen people who get so del delusional with this and I've seen it in person. Oh my God, I've seen it in person. I met someone, um, who's even said that and she worked out and she was was quite overweight and she's like well I'm not worried about weight loss I'm just I'm just worried about getting leaner you know it's I, I don't care about the scale weight you know and I'm not worried I, I'm not worried about weight loss as long as uh, you know if I'm gaining muscle or whatever the scale doesn't have to go down but she was you know uh, probably 70 80 pounds over her ideal weight uh, so in that case, that was kind of, that's not a correct uh, mindset, you know, and again, you've got to look at overall health and stuff, right? So you have that to think about. Obviously, if you need to lose a bunch of weight, you need to diet down. If it's for health purposes, or you're just carrying excessive body fat. If you're really skinny and you need to gain significant amounts of muscle uh, because your goal is to get bigger, yes, you're going to have to gain some weight. Right, and hopefully we can understand this. But when we start talking about overall longer term changes, I don't think that we need to do always do dedicated bulks and cuts. Like even now for me, I did a lean bulk last year, but it was like eight pounds. I've done a, a cut and dropped down, and now now that I'm eating a lot more carbs, I've picked up a little bit of water, glycogen stores are a little fuller, but I'm still technically losing body fat. Um but I'm not even thinking of, of true cutting as long as I'm getting a downward trend in body fat. Um, and, you know, we get this idea that people think you can't recomposition at all. But the, the research has shown that recomposition it is possible. It's absolutely possible even in, in fairly advanced athletes. It's just a slow process. But gains are slow at that point anyways. Uh, but for a person who is not aiming to reach a specific very specific body weight or very specific low body fat or or so on. No, I, I don't think that we have to do that. I, I think it is possible for us to see some general recomposition over time, okay? Uh, and I think competitive bodybuilding is what's clouded that quite a bit. And, and I think that's a lot of it because people are trying to reach unsustainable levels of body fat. But you go back a few generations and they didn't necessarily do that. Okay, you go back to the 70s, uh, Arnold Branko Colombo days, they weren't necessarily cutting for bodybuilding shows. 
Okay. Now, granted, we know that there were were magical supplements involved, special stuff, uh, and and yeah, that can can absolutely be a factor there. But the idea, though, is is still quite similar. Of uh, they didn't cut for bodybuilding shows because they were not necessarily trying to get ultra shredded. They weren't trying to reach today's standards. And so they oftentimes didn't. A lot of times, some of them gained weight. Some of them gained weight going into their bodybuilding shows. It was a different world. So I think this is where this gets uh, distorted. Um, but again, for people who are really, really trying to get big. But if a person is just chasing an improved physique and improved performance, I don't think it's necessary for us to make the large jumps in, in, in body weight. Um, and I still get that with a lot of my clients. They always want to do bulks and customers. Some of them, I, I would tell them, look, you could you could recomp if you're willing to keep your diet really clean. And I think that's a big part of it. Um, that's something, one of the reasons I'm telling people, look, the higher carb, lower fat type diet, really low fat, it does work well for recomposition simply because your body is not going to gain body fat. Now, other people have commented with that in there too. I've seen a bunch of long timers who chime in and they laugh and they're like, Look, guys, I mean, he, he is right. You can think whatever you want, but if you do the really low fat pro diet, you're living on chicken and, and brown rice and vegetables. He's like, you're not going to be able to gain body fat. He's like, it, it's going to, unless you're eating some fat, you're probably not going to gain any body fat. Uh, so there is something something to that. It is absolutely possible to, to lean bulk into possibly recomposition a, a bit. Because, uh, again, the same thing, I did that lean bulk earlier this year I bulked about 10 months I looked leaner and now that I'm cutting I look quite a bit leaner and then I'm going to just kind of just maybe do a downward trend that's why people were like well how long are you going to take to reach your target body fat I'm like however long it takes I'm not going to do necessarily a true dedicated cut to where I need to see the scale go down every week it's just not necessary um, and I, but I think it's the same for a lot of people. Look, if you simply focus upon training really hard, eating well, even if you're staying pretty close to maintenance calories and your training is dialed in, you eat clean, you eat healthy, you're keeping fat low, carbs high, protein high, and you were doing a lot of training, recomposition happens. I mean, look, look at even my client, Michelle. A bunch of people are like, has she been cutting lately? No, she did her cut a while back. We've stayed at the same body weight for months now. Okay, but she looks leaner. She's recomposition. Her training volumes are very, very, very high. Her diet is very clean. And it, at maintenance calories, pretty much, she is losing fat and gaining muscle. We just, you can recomposition. Um, the only time this really is, is problematic is if you're saying, I really need to maximize, say, my new gains. I really need to gain whatever amount of muscle this year. You may need to eat in a surplus to pull that off. If you were trying to lose 20 pounds of body fat, you're not going to recomposition 20 pounds in six months. It's just not going to happen, right? So hopefully that, that clarifies it a little bit. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.